white flowers told their story of purity and of death. One each from grieving mothers, classmates and many strangers. A whole nation wanting ritual to tame the horror of this loss. They were meant to be school children, not heroes. Their faces too young for this. What should I do, she says, what should I do? I feel angry when I think of all the students who weren't rescued. If we had acted sooner, they would have survived. I often imagine what they must have gone through. They must have screamed for help. That thought tortures me. The messages left by mourners spoke of sympathy and guilt, but also pride. My beloved little sister, this one said, we heard you saved your friend. We are so proud of you. There were faces missing from the commemorations. Scores of students still haven't been found. In Jindo, the nightly searching and identifying has become a grim routine now. Tonight, more crew members are being questioned over whether they left their passengers to drown. There's a need here to find some answers, or at least someone to blame. For some, the hardest day in this grim story will be tomorrow. The high school at the centre of this tragedy has become a memorial site, a place of funerals and grieving. But tomorrow, with half its classrooms empty, it'll open as a school again. Their desks and lockers will now be empty spaces. School friendships ended, futures gone. These smiling teenagers will be missed by so many. You hope they would have known how much. Lucy Williamson, BBC News, Ansan, South Korea.